50,238, a completely arbitrary number that has taken up more than 20 hours of my time in the last week. A number that outside of this series of minimum stud videos has no meaning whatsoever. In fact, even within these videos, that number still means nothing. As I mentioned in the first part of this mini-series, I would be using the beginning part of this video to address any mistakes I made in the last. And we have quite a few we can correct. Actually, quite a lot. So if you haven't checked out part 1 yet, you might want to do that first. On my stream, twitch.tv slash bd1p by the way, we discovered some new tech that revolutionizes this challenge already. But before we show that off, let's cover some more minor things. There were two instances of the game automatically giving me 1750 studs for completing quick time events that are completely optional. Apparently in this game, if you fail a quick time event, you still succeed the event, but just don't gain the studs. Personally, I thought that failing a QTE would make you, you know, fail the task, but nope. All we have to do is hit the button before entering the green area to be safe, subtracting 3500 from our previous total. A community member named Amazing Guy was also able to get the stud total from Always a Bigger Fish down from 5850 to 5460, saving us 390. And that's pretty much it. Besides one major thing. In the middle of the first level of Empire Strikes Back, I accidentally switched characters right before picking up a stud, and instead of the stud just continuing to gravitate towards me, it just stopped right in its place. It didn't despawn and it didn't count towards our total, meaning that we found a way to manipulate a stud's position. We dubbed this simply stud pulling. This trick is super hard to do, and honestly, would have made a case for buying the stud magnet upgrade if you would have been able to toggle it both on and off, which you sadly can't do. Basically, all you have to do is attract a stud as one player, then when it's on the move, switch to another player so it stops. If you collect the stud, restart the level. Now listen, I'm a pretty busy guy, and I don't have time to do this with every single stud in the game. What I did instead was test how far a stud can go from its origin. And surprisingly, there seems to be no limit. As I mentioned in the first part of this run, this is a theoretical minimum stud run, due to the fact that every single stud pickup saves, even if you forcibly crash your game. And theoretically, these are all the studs it would be able to save in the first third of this run. We have 120 studs from spinning this lever open in the Phantom Menace, 20 walkway studs in Better Call Mall, 240 studs from rolling on top of your ball and outmanned but not outgunned, 120 studs in Dexter's Diner, 100 in this hallway leading into the arena fight, 110 on the zip lines of Kashyyyk if you pull them off to either the left or the right direction, and 440 in the high ground when opening both doors for a total of 1,150 studs saved by pulling. Now add that number to the 390 from Bigger Fish and the 3500 from the QTEs, and subtract that from our previous total, and we get a somewhat definitive answer of 45,198 studs for the prequel films. As I mentioned briefly earlier, stud pulling is an extremely precise trick that is super easy to mess up. And since you'd have to pull some of these studs miles away from their origin to reach other studs behind them, it would take hours. Hours that I don't have to spare if I want to maintain a weekly upload schedule. If you're upset or you're mad that I'm not gonna waste my early 20s watching funny colors move in a video game, just know that I wouldn't be including any hour-long segments of me just pulling studs in the final video regardless. So the content that you're watching right now would be the exact same. It just saves more time on my end. With that all out of the way, let's discuss the topic of today's video, the original trilogy. I streamed the first two movies live, and it was a blast. This is definitely the most fun I've had challenge running this game, 
because a lot of the tricks I'll be using either look really stupid or really flashy. Thanks to those of you who were there to help me find ways around certain studs, and if you want to watch the sequel trilogy live, my Twitch is linked down below. But without further ado, let's continue answering our question. Of how many studs does it take to beat LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga? Right off the bat, we hit some turbulence. A New Hope's first level has a few tricks that we'll need to enact in order to ensure we get through studless. The first one here being this target. When you shoot the target, studs will drop, and because it's a mini scripted cutscene to show off the next area, your character will also move forward collecting those studs. The best way around this that we found is to get your character stuck behind these boxes so they won't be able to get out when the cutscene plays. We get to go a little bit further without much issue, up until the dreaded trampoline room. There's a few studs blocking the levers you need to pull, which you're gonna have to pick up, but that's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue comes when you realize that the game puts an invisible wall up in front of the levers until you move the trampoline into position. When you build the trampoline, the game spawns a line of studs straight forward and you'll have to collect them in order to get the trampoline into position to remove the invisible wall. Or at least you would, if you didn't know how to stud pull. That's right, it's time to spend 6 hours dragging studs away on both paths and resetting if you pick one up. On the bright side, you can make a tight jump on this barrier to skip the ones that spawn in the air. And once again, if you want to avoid grabbing the ones on the ledge, you could also stud pull these away, allowing us to leave this room with zero studs collected. I know stud pulling is going to seem like a be-all end-all solution for most puzzles, but trust me when I say there are a lot of cooler and easier ways to traverse later levels that we'll talk about at those points. After this room, you enter the R2 and C3PO section, which has a trail of studs leading into the cutscene. You can obviously spend your time pulling each stud out of the way, or you could push off this box and make some really well-timed corner jumps until you land on the trigger and progress forward. Open the doors as C-3PO and make some more tight corner jumps and you'll be on your way to Tatooine. The only stud you have to worry about here is heading towards Mos Eisley. There is one silver stud in front of the door. You're able to stud pull this out of the way on your way in, but on your way out the game will just automatically give it to you, bringing us up to 10 studs for the trilogy thus far. The spaceport level has no required studs, but you do need to be careful of some things. Number one, do not activate this gun right here, as if an ally chooses to rebuild the gun it will just automatically give you studs. Number two, do not shoot down this walkway, since you'll need it to progress to a higher area later on in the level. Because the elevator has studs leading all the way up to the top, you'll instead need to use this walkway and some precisely stacked boxes to jump on up instead. And then from there, just body block the shots from hitting Chewie and finish off with zero studs collected. Next, you'll head to the Death Star to rescue Leia. This part being my favorite trick in the trilogy thus far. Stand on these boxes, then use Chewie to open up the force field. I only gained studs from doing this half of the time, so I'm guessing you need to find a way to fail this auto-shooting cutscene in the same manner that you fail the QTEs. But I don't really know what qualifies as failing a scoundrel event, maybe it's just random. Anyways, jump over these studs so you end up below the orange bars overlooking this big central tunnel, and enter in player 2. Position player 2 right in this corner, and jump off their head to grab the orange bar. While you can dodge the studs that are on the bottom platform by not moving too far forward, you're gonna be forced to grab one silver by jumping up. I don't see any way realistically that you could stud pull this far enough out of the way without accidentally grabbing it. Maybe if you jump to the bar on the left you could, but that jump window is super super precise, and good luck trying to re-grab it after the pull. So that puts us at a total of 20 for the trilogy thus far. There are two more points where you have to stud pull in this level. Those being in the elevator where this blue one is, and right in front of the buttons where you open the gate to free Leia. 
Aside from that, just run fast enough to beat the stud train that spawns from opening the gate and head to the mini boss fight. This fight is complete RNG to if you pick up studs or not, since they kind of just rain on down from the ceiling. But with enough hope and the right dodges, it shouldn't be too hard after a few attempts. Heading into our escape sequence, you'll need to pull this silver stud away from the R2 panel. Then jump up here as Obi-1 to toss 3PO on top of the generator to avoid touching any of the studs that wrap around it. Right in the beginning of this level, you'll want to bait the stormtroopers into bombing this silver crate so you can avoid the studs given to you through using the intended scoundrel event. This is going to automatically give you 550 studs at the very lowest, putting us at 570 studs for the trilogy thus far. It isn't over yet, however, as during this cutscene, the game sends you right into two silver studs against this barricade, no matter who you're playing as, bringing us up to 590. Lucky for us, that's the only roadblock here. When you make it to Yavin, you'll have complete access to the free play roster, making the whole planet pretty easy to dodge. But we can't say the same for our next vehicle level. This level is ridiculous in so many ways. If a TIE Fighter crashes into something, you gain studs. If you shoot the wrong thing, you gain studs. If you don't shoot enough things, you get stuck in an endless loop. So I had to segment this level into three separate parts to figure out the optimal amount of studs. In the first leg of this level, your goal is to destroy five turbo cannons, giving you 1,580 studs each for a total of 7,900. In the second part, you need to take down a certain amount of TIE Fighters, but because they don't give you any studs, we can just skip over this. The last segment, however, is a bit trickier. You'll need to open up one of the torpedo stations to shoot out the exhaust ports, and that is going to cost you 940 studs. There are four exhaust ports you need to hit, which individually give you 390 and collectively give you 1560, setting our level total at 9460 and our movie total at 10,050. Empire Strikes Back goes surprisingly well, besides the very first level and the very last level. Right when you start off this movie, the game puts you directly next to 110 studs, which in my testing were undodgeable. After stacking up these boxes here, you can start the real first level. Starting off on Hoth, there are two ways to do this level. Obviously, I had to figure it out on my own first and realized there was going to be no way to scale these towers without collecting studs. You can get inside each tower just fine by either running on the edges of this bridge like showcased here or just jumping the wall as seen here. From there, I tried to climb up these ropes to the top, which is really, really difficult. It's theorized to be possible, but because you're always sliding and you can occasionally clip through it, it was too unreliable. After stream that day, I went back and discovered you have both the proper terrain and character to launch off this flag here and land directly on top of each tower. You have to be really cautious though, since each lever has a blue stud directly in front of it, and since only one character in this level can launch, you might think pulling would be impossible. But if we do the launch, pull the stud just a little bit, then do the launch again, you can get just enough room to pull the lever and not grab the 1000, ending us off at zero studs. Next we have another vehicle level, which goes by well up until the very end when you have to grapple some AT-ATs. There are two main issues here, issue one being that the game will create these rings it wants you to go through, which obviously give you studs. The other issue is that upon shooting the AT-ATs when down, they also give you studs. Good news first, you can narrowly dodge these rings and still take down the AT-80. -AT. Bad news last, there's no way to avoid the stud grabbing from beating the AT-80s. Each of these gives you 790, multiply that by 3, and you have a new level total of 2,370 and a trilogy total of 12,530. 
Again, we're looking at a vehicle level taking down Star Destroyers, in which we have to shoot torpedoes at the enemy ships. These studs automatically go into your total each time, with an ending level total of 7,900 and a trilogy total of 20,430. When you land on Dagobah, we can use the same R2 trick as the no jump run to skip the entirety of the Jedi training section and head right to Cloud City. We do encounter a bit of a roadblock starting off the level here, but because we're in the overworld we have access to free play. All you need to do is toss 3PO's legs on through, become a Jedi, and stack these couches up to avoid the silver stud located in the level starting trigger. Aside from that, just make sure when you're inputting the keycard into the door right here, that you switch characters before this pesky stud to your left gets picked up. The game returns us to Luke's point of view on Dagobah where it spawns you directly on top of a silver stud. Great! Adding another 10 to our new total of 20,450. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. When accessing this panel as R2 in the Vader fight, you're forced to grab one silver. And when Luke jumps to attack Vader in this scripted segment, he jumps directly onto some studs, setting us at 120 for this area. When we get down to this tube section, we find that both of our only options down are littered with studs. The best way around this that I found is to kick the shit out of R2. The further we land, the better. My lowest total using this strategy is 110 studs. You can use the same strategy in the next tube, but this time, wait for the cutscene to play out so you can avoid grabbing any of the studs. Vader's hiding out in the back of this hallway, and when you find him, he pulls you forward through some studs. That's your force to collect. Totaling another 120, setting our level total at 350 thus far. Jump on some guardrails and across some boxes until our next scripted section in which you are, once again, forced to grab 120 studs, raising our new total to 470 and 20,910 for the entire trilogy thus far. But we still have one movie to go. But before we start on Return of the Jedi, it would mean a lot if you went down below and left a like if you've enjoyed the video thus far. I mean, if you've sat through the last, like, 15 minutes, I would hope you're enjoying it. And if it's not too much to ask, the sub button isn't much further away either. It lets me as a creator know that there's a continued interest in a series like this on my channel and helps motivate me to keep working hard at it. If you don't like the content I make in the future, you'll always be free to unsubscribe. Anyways, Jabba's Palace is a cakewalk. You'll have to do some stud polling at these levers, but that's about it. Make sure to also try and keep the Rancor centered during your fight with it to avoid any collateral damage resulting in studs. When you make it to the skiff, it's the same deal. Don't overdo your combo meter and avoid any collateral damage. Go to Dagobah, watch somebody die, then leave like nothing happened. Drop on down to Endor just in time for the most straightforward but also somehow convoluted level in the entire run so far. Just like in the Death Star Trench Run, in each third of this level, you have to take out five scout troopers. Avoid breaking any trees or shrubbery, and, well, you'll be good. The biggest issue here is just avoiding and shooting anything unnecessary. This level took me longer than the pod race did, and the explanation somehow just boils down to don't shoot anything extra. If you plan to try this challenge yourself, remember that dying is always a better alternative to getting money. Yeah, put that on my tombstone. And after 13 long levels of deliberation, we get to my all-time favorite level to challenge run, and this time I came prepared. Jump on top of the elevator wall, hold down aim, and start walking backwards. When you begin to fall, let go of aim and your control stick, repress aim in the air, and mash your attack button, and, well, just fly. Walk all the way around towards the little shield generator thingy and end off with an easy zero studs required. And during the final Vader fight and the second to last Palpatine fight, the player is forced to grab 20 studs when entering into this little cat and mouse game below the throne. Then, once the first cutscene stops playing, the game puts you a little bit too close to this 100 stud to dodge, netting you 120 for the entire level, since nothing else seems to pose an issue. 
This makes Return of the Jedi our cheapest movie yet, costing us only 120 studs for the full movie, mostly thanks to a lack of vehicle levels. This puts our full trilogy total at a nice 21,030 studs and a full game total of 66,228. It's now up to just the sequel movies to keep us below that sweet, sweet 100k. And it's going to be super close. If you don't want to miss that video next week, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. And follow my Twitch if you want to see those done live. Until next time, I've been BD1P, peace out, and goodbye.